everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Thank you for joining me for week nine of our organization challenge. So this month we have been talking about fabric. We've covered UFOs or unfinished objects and works in progress kind of bunched together, scraps, pre-cuts that included fat quarters, and this week we're gonna talk about yardage. So let's get started. We're gonna first start talking about the yardage that we have. And I'm lucky in this way that I kind of have mine under control. I organized it a few weeks ago and I put it on these comic book boards and I love, love, love the way it turned out. I think they're really pretty on display and they're just a really great way for me to use my fabric. I can see it, I use it, I don't buy things that I already have and I also know what holes I have in my collection. So for example, I can see that I don't have a lot of whites. When I go to the quilt shop, that might be something I pick up to make sure that I have a very balanced stash of fabric for when the inspiration strikes. That is just one way to organize it, however, and I really do love that way, but there are many different ways to fold fabric. Uh, I am going to show you this quick video on how I do fold my fabric onto comic book boards. I'm also gonna show you how you can just fold it and some tips about that. So let's take a look at this clip now. All right, so let's talk about first wrapping it on a comic book board. So this is already wrapped, but I'll show you exactly how I did it. And I use these alligator clips that I got on Amazon. Uh, and they're just plastic clips that help secure it. And you don't need that, but I like it because it does keep everything kind of together. So this is a couple yards. I think it's two yards of fabric. It's really cute. I got it a few years ago. It has little yo-yos printed on it. Isn't that cute? And actually it's probably more like three yards. But anyway, um, the way it comes off the bolt when you buy it is like this. So Here's your salvage up here. It's folded in half and it's on the bolt like this. So once you get it home, you can take your fabric from the bolt and fold it so the salvages just about meet that folded edge. And you know, you might need to press it. You might need to even just hand press it, um, you know, and straighten it out, but you get it nice and straight or straight-ish. It actually doesn't need to be super straight and you start to wrap. So you may have to go back and adjust this so you have enough overlay, but usually it works out pretty well. And you just put your board right on the fabric, fold it over and wrap it just like this. And it just keeps it nice and tidy. Now you can see here, I don't have quite enough to put over and put my clips on. It might get a little ratty. You could either fold this in and put your clips on, okay? Or you could start over if you really want to get it nice and neat and adjust how much you fold over in the very beginning. So that's one way. I really like this way. It is absolutely my favorite, as I mentioned earlier. However, you can do just a fold. This is good too, especially if you don't wanna invest in the boards, totally makes sense. The only thing I caution against is possibly folding it in half this way, and then in half this way, and up like this. And it's totally a preference of your own. You know, if you want to do that, that's my personal choice with this. But what's a pain in the neck about this is if you only want, say, a half a yard, you got to open up the whole thing to get to it. So if you're choosing not to use the comic book boards, you could just fold it by rolling it. Like rolling it up so you can at least get to yardage if you want to use it okay uh, the important thing i think though if you are going to fold it and not use a comic book board is to either fold under that cut edge or um, secure it in some way just because you don't want that to keep unraveling if it's a very loosely woven fabric and that would be how you'd fold it if you weren't going to use a comic book board basically the same way you can also wrap it on rulers. I've seen that done. 
I demonstrate that in one of my vlogs too. Um, and you can even use foam core. So just some thoughts on folding fabric. And of course you can do it and looks really nice sitting on a shelf, um, nice and neat too. So there's many different ways to do this. It's great, folding the fabric and putting it on comic book boards is a great way to start, right? But what about those ugly fabrics or those fabrics that you just, they don't inspire you anymore. What do you do with them? Well, there are a few different things you can do with them. One thing is you can make a pet bed and I'll put a link to a video I made last week here about how I do that. It's a great way to use up not only fabrics maybe you don't like, but it's also a great way to stuff it with the scraps that you have. But folding our fabric is just one way that we would organize it and one method of organizing it within an organization method, right? So how do you store that fabric once it is folded? There are many different ways to do that. Some people put it into plastic bins and stack it maybe in a closet, especially if you have a small space. This is a great way to keep it clean, keep it out of direct sunlight, and to be able to use it when you need it, but stash it away when you don't need it. The downside to that though is that you're not seeing it all the time, so you might not know what you have. The upside is it stays clean and fresh and of course store it in a small space fairly easily once you stack up those containers. Another way then to store it is on shelves. The downside to that is that they can be exposed to direct sunlight, which can damage our fabric. So you have to be very careful about that, especially if the shelving is open, of course. But it does look really pretty and it is kind of in your face in there all the time that you know what you have and you know kind of what you need. And when you wanna make a project, you can pull from it very easily, almost like a mini quilt shop. Another way people organize it is open containers. And that's the way I used to organize it, which I mentioned last week. It's a great way to organize your fabric because you can drop things into it very quickly and easily, especially when you're cleaning up your space and you don't necessarily have to worry about opening a container and putting it in or wrapping it around or free folding it. The downside is you don't see it and it's, sometimes easy to put unfolded fabric in there so it gets wrinkled. So whatever way works best for you is the best way to store your fabric. But it is important that we take care of our fabric because it's expensive and it is our main palette for the art we do. So let's just talk a minute about those fabrics we either don't like anymore I like to call them the uglies. And of course that's in the eye of the beholder, right? Some people think something's ugly and other people think it's pretty. I have a great example of that, of a quilt I made that I'll put a picture of right here. I was quilting it on a long arm that I rented at a local quilt shop maybe a year or two ago. One lady came up and told me it was the ugliest quilt she ever saw. I think it's a really great quilt. It also has a lot of sentimental meaning to me and I love the colors, but somebody else might find that ugly. Anyway, back to my point. So you do have fabric in your stash that you don't necessarily like, but somebody else might like. So you donate it. You can donate it to charities. You can donate it to thrift shops, to schools, to nursing homes, or even to other quilters that maybe can't afford some of the fabric or maybe just love the fabric that you think is ugly. So that's just one idea. You can also make projects out of it. The best thing about this particular project is that I stuffed it with scraps that I had. So it was, using up two things, ugly fabric that I had, or what I considered ugly, and the scraps that I had too, especially those small scraps. So it was kind of like double duty, getting rid of some of those scraps and some of my ugly fabric. You can also put it on the backs of quilts and you can use it for binding or even the background for the stitch and flip method, which is what I did in my crazy quilt. If you remember, I used a fabric that I didn't particularly like anymore as my foundation. So there's lots of uses for it. The important thing is as we get organized, we wanna make sure that we are organized and have things in our space that we will use and we will love. So that will bring me to my task for you this week. The task is to go through your yardage, really pick out the ones that you know you're not gonna use, that you don't like anymore, and either donate them, repurpose them, make some pet beds, something, but make sure that you get it out of your space or at least allocate it in your space, say for a backing. The next thing to do is to containerize it somehow, whether it be on comic book boards, folded on a shelf, put in actual containers, open containers or something, but get it organized in a way that works for you. 
And if that's plastic containers, great. Or if it's on a shelf folded or on comic book boards or whatever it is, just get it organized so you know what you have and that it's ready to go when you, your inspiration strikes or when you find that pattern that you absolutely have to make and you can shop your stash first. And finally, your last task is to make something out of some of your fabric that you have. Just take some time to enjoy this wonderful gift we have of a lot of fabric and make something with it, do something fun. So now I'm just gonna give you a quick update on my scrap quilt. It's coming along nicely. I've finished the red blocks and I finished the orange blocks. I'm getting started this week on the yellow blocks and I'm so excited. It will be a rainbow quilt and uh, it is by Quilts for the Making. Carrie V hosts that blog and I'll put another link to that in the description. I hope you have a wonderful week enjoying your organized space as we come along through this journey together. Please subscribe if you haven't done so and I will see you next week for week 10 and a new month and a new theme of our organization challenge. So I'll see you then. Make some time to sew this week. Bye.